Good morning students. Welcome to another lecture on microprocessor and microcontrollers. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the interrupts of MSP430, 5XX families and also the types of interrupts of MSP430 in this lecture. So coming to the interrupt, what is an interrupt? It is an event that causes or that stops the current program and uh, use an acknowledgement that if there is a new program or a, a new instruction is there to perform. So that is nothing but an interrupt is an event that causes the microcontroller to stop the normal program execution. So it stops the normal program execution and it gives an instruction which comes or which is having highest priority that instruction will be executed. Why interrupts? What is the need of interrupts? So here, in order to perform the urgent tasks, suppose for if you are running a program in a sequential manner, if there comes an uh, urgent task which should be performed, it will be executed initially. For example, if you are making, if you are, uh, making a phone call or if you are talking in a phone, then if a uh, message is being sent by your friend to you, then the message will be stopped, stored in your memory location. And it's, uh, there will be a slight disturbance that uh, we, can, we can easily find that uh, there is a uh, disturbance in our call. Means if it should perform an urgent task, then the interrupts will be in, will be occur. Then, uh, unfrequent tasks what is the meaning of uh, unfrequent tasks so uh, it, uh, a microprocessor handles a slow inputs from humans which saves the overhead of regular polling that means uh, uh, it takes very less time or it takes a very slow inputs which can be done by the microprocessors and the next one is waking up the CPU from sleeping mode. Generally, we are using this micro MSP430 microcontrollers in the low power mode. So, whenever the system is not in use, most of the peripherals will enter into a sleep mode. So, you know, if I want to use the same peripheral again, then it should be wake up through an interrupt. And the next one is calls to an operating systems, and uh, these are often process to create trap flag or a software interrupter and uh, this is not happened in MSP 430 device. So here we have two types of uh, interrupts that is uh, internal external interrupts and internal interrupts. External interrupt is nothing but the interrupt which is coming from the external devices and the internal interrupts are which are coming are the interrupts which are coming within the device. So here see interrupts are generated by external devices connected to the microcontroller if you are accessing with external devices if uh, an interrupt is coming from external device then those are type of interrupts are called external interrupts uh, or within the in uh, within the microcontroller itself then those are called internal interrupts so we have a uh, two kinds of interrupts maskable and non maskable maskable means which can be which can be stopped during the program. Non-maskable means which cannot be stopped. That means whenever a non-maskable interrupt enter into the microcontroller or processor, then the processor has to stop the present program and it execute the instruction which is a non-maskable instruction uh, interrupt. Okay, if GIE value is equal to zero, then the interrupt may be masked and if its value is equal to 1 then the interrupt is non-masking. So there are three types of non-maskable interrupts like uh, oscillator fault, access violation to memory flash memory and active edge on external reset or NMI pin. Oscillator frequency means whenever the oscillator varies or it stops then it is an uh, or whenever an oscillator sends an interrupt input then it should be accessed first next coming to the next one access violation violation instance breaking 
so access violation to flash memory whenever there is a breaking in the process then this type of uh, interrupt has to be executed and an active edge on the external reset or nmip this is also an, an non maskable interrupt pin so coming to the next one interrupt service routine so what is an interrupt service routine the code to handle an interrupt is called an interrupt handler or an interrupt service routine that means the program to handle an interrupt is called an interrupt handler or interrupt service routine that means the address of the interrupt will be stored in the interrupt service routine and the address of interrupt service routine is called interrupt vector that means the the interrupt service routines which are stored or the address of these interrupt service routine are stored are also called as an interrupt vector the collection of all interrupt vectors is called an interrupt vector table we have already seen in uh, 8086 that an interrupt vector table of 8086 maskable interrupt non maskable interrupts dedicated interrupts like that so the msp430 uses vector interrupts each in uh, interrupt service routine has its own vector which is stored at a predefined address in vector table at the end of a program memory here each and every interrupt service routine has its own vector that means its own value which is stored in the in, uh, interrupt vector table so processing of interrupt how an interrupt is been processed for example uh, see here if you are running in the main if a main program if your main program is running then uh, suddenly if an interrupt enters into the main program or into the cpu i have already told you number of times about what is an interrupt what is a priority of interrupt and how it is going to be executed i have told you number of times in your class so if an interrupt is entered then the main program will be stopped and the interrupt will be given to the isr that means it pushes the program counter and pushes the stack counter and loads the p program counter with address of the interrupt service request and here the it will directly go to the interrupt service request address and perform the interrupt and will return back to the source register and pop up the program counter here push by meaning and pop meaning i have already explained you after the popping or uh, um, sorry stack register and program counter it come back again it will again come back to the main program and the program count uh, program counter will execute the remaining steps in the main program see here the cpu completes the execution of current instruction and the program counter which is to the next instruction is pushed into the stack pointer and the stack uh, and the stack register is pushed onto the stack the interrupt with highest priority is selected if multiple interrupts are waiting for a service suppose previously we have seen that one interrupt is there if there are multiple interrupts then the interrupt which is having highest priority will be served first and the interrupt request flag is cleared automatically for vectors that have a single source that means interrupt flag interrupt flag will automatically cleared after performing a task okay coming to the next one the uh, so stack register is cleared which has two effects first further maskable interrupts are disabled because jai bit is cleared and non maskable interrupts remain active second it terminates only any low power mode terminates means it terminates means it uh, closes any low power mode see here initially the source register is cleared which has two effects first one is future maskable interrupts are disabled maskable interrupts will be disabled and non maskable interrupts will be enabled and the second one is it uh, terminates it reduces it switches off or it disables the low power mode and the finally the last one is 
the interrupt vector is loaded into your program counter and the cpu starts to execute the interrupt service routine at that address the interrupt vector is loaded into the program counter see here the interrupt vector is loaded into the program counter and the cpu starts to execute that one okay thank you and coming to the watchdog timer what we have already uh, i have already told you in the block diagram of msp 430 family a watchdog timer is an electronic timer that is used to detect and recover from the computer mall functions that means here we are going to recover it so uh, for, for example the clock mode clock minutes seconds so it has to be continuously refreshed so see here the watch stop timer must restart the system on occurrence of software problem or if a selected time is time interval expires whenever the time uh, given time interval expires then this watch stop timer has to be selected see here this is a internal operation here the clock signal is same for the cpu and the watch stop timer so the microcontrollers often include an integrated integrated on chip watch stop timer we are including it in within the uh, cpu or a microcontroller as they have an independent uh, same clock cycles and also the timer intervals of watch stop timer have either fixed values or a programmable time intervals so fixed values means after every 5 seconds or after every 10 seconds second it has to restart or it has to uh, refresh it or uh, it may be variable depending upon the program and uh, some watch stop timers also allow the time intervals to be programmed by selecting a mof uh, from some of a few selectable a discrete values or some constant values and which may be may be very few milliseconds or a minute and uh, uh, the watch dog timer is active by default and must be disabled regularly so that the watch dog function is uh, not needed in an application and the module can be configured as an interval timer and generate interrupt such as regular intervals that means uh, here if some uh, some application in some applications we are not going to use this watch dog timer then it will generate a refresh in a particular time intervals so coming to the features of the watch dog timers there are uh, four selectable timer intervals so based on that as i have told you that are uh, discrete values or programmable values or selectable values sometimes we are not going to select or it can be an inbuilt values and uh, one more thing watch dog mode so uh, refreshing mode or interval mode after some time of uh, after some time a break will be there then the again it has to be restarted access to word control watch dog from access to watch dog timer control registry is password protected it is a password protected controller cannot break this one so control of a reset or a nmi pin function it controls the non maskable or it resets the pin function selectable clock sources we can change the clock sources depending upon the application and can be stopped to conserve power suppose if uh, an application is running after the completion of application some of the ics are not required or some of the peripherals are not required then it will automatically stops the power so clock fail or safe feature so whenever the clock fails this will enter into a safe feature for example if our os is not working properly then we are restart then we will restart the os and open it in a safe mode after that we can again go for the previous mode so how a watch dog timer is going to operate and uh, see here the default period of the watch dog timer is a maximum value of 32768 counts which is there for around 32 milliseconds so its maximum value is 32768 counts and uh, how many seconds only 32 milliseconds and the watch dog timer clock is either smclk or aclk according to the 
watchdog timer select bit so smclk and aclk these are <coughs> the inputs which is given to the peripherals present in the microcontroller so mclk is given to the cpu the operation of the watchdog timer is controlled by the 16 bit password protector as i have already told you and if the watchdog function is not needed in application the model can configure as an interval timer if it is not required then it is acts as an interval timer see here this is 16 bit 0 to 15 we will discuss about each and every bit here 0 and 1 here bit 0 and 1 here we are taking two bit values that is watchdog timer interval select what type of interval or what type of clock sources how many num count, how many counts are there for example if both bits are zero then the clock sources is 32768 it counts 32768 and 01 means 8192 counts 10 means 512 counts 11 means 64 counts so coming to the bit 2 position if this bit value is 1 then it will take ACLK and this if this bit value is uh, zero, then it will take ESMCLK. Coming to the bit three, watchdog timer counter clear. So it clears the value. That means count value will be clear. That if this value is one, clears the count value to zero 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 zero. That means if this uh, bit is set, then the count value will become zero. And if this is reset, no action will be taken to the towards the count value so coming to the next one watchdog timer mode select in what type of mode it has to be work if the way this value is one then it will enter into a interval timer mode and if its value is zero it will enter into a watchdog mode interval timer mode means after a particular time interval it will again restart or it will uh, <coughs> re-execute the program coming to the bit 5 Watchdog timer NMI select. Which bit value is watchdog timer NMI. If this bit value is one, then NMI function on maskable interrupt will be function. If it's a zero, then a reset function will be in application. So bit number six is watchdog timer NMI edge select. Here if we can see that it's a falling edge or raising edge. So if the bit value is one, then we are taking it an falling edge falling edge see selects the interpreters for the nmi in a falling edge if its value is one if its value is zero then it is in a rising edge so coming to the next one watchdog timer hold so if its value is one then the st it stops the watchdog timer it will automatically stop the watchdog timer and its value is zero watchdog timer will not be stopped and the remaining eight bits so the remaining 8 bits are watchdog timer password it is a password protector as we have already told you that watchdog timer is a password protector always read as 0x69 must be written as 0x5a or reset is generated and never if you are not entering a error after password it will again ask you to enter the uh, valid password valid password valid password after entering or two or three times it will ask you for an otp request like that if uh, uh, the eight bits of the remaining higher eight bits of uh, watchdog timer will be like uh, it will be read as 0x69 and it will be written as 0x5a or reset is generated thank you